and welcome to Respect Dance Fest Weekly with me, Nikaya, and my co-host, Brandi Beasley. Hello, everybody. We're keeping it going over here, working up to SF International Hip Hop Dance Fest mm-hmm. online. You know what today is? It's Halloween. Today is Halloween. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Every, every, every time we do this, I'm like, Micaiah's confusing me, but I'm not confused anymore. <laughs> but I thought about it, and the day that this airs is Halloween. So okay. happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween to everyone. I know your children are going to have a good time. My grandbabies are going to all dress up as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So do you notice anything? Uh, yeah, I'm excited, but I don't have mine yet. New uh, Dance Fest gear. Hello. You need to get a little closer for me. I see someone with the hat. Okay. Yes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Who's on there? <laughs> this are the uh, commissioned soloists that I chose to collaborate and put a piece together this year. Uh, at the top, we have Sun. She uh, lives in New York. We have Jardy, who is in California. We have Jade in um, London and Navid in Norway and Way is in London as well. And he is a member of one of the dance, the, the members of people we are interviewing today. So we have not only Dwayne, who is one of the members of, of Bird Gang, but he, uh, they are also, we are showing at Dance Fest the year, this year, Vice from Bird Gang Dance Company as one of our all time favorite past SF International Hip Hop Dance Fest pieces. Yes, I'm excited. I'm a huge Bird Gang fan. I got blown away when they came to Dance Fest and just uh, left it on the stage. Yes, and left us all just kind of quiet, right? You either want them really hella loud or quiet. Yes. So I am happy to introduce Quayle Roach and Kendra Horsberg from Bird Gang Dance Company. So that dance company was founded in 2005 and they described themselves as movement architects, which I think is a very apt description. And so they have a unique kind of hip hop theatrical style and they use that to explore political and social contexts of our society. So here we go. We're going to show a clip of Bird Gang at SF International Hip Hop Dance Fest. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Hello from London. Yay. Oh. This is our first international interview. Yeah. Oh, really? This is the first yeah. one? This is the first one. We've What's been good? all in the States, not necessarily all in California, but this is our first one jumping out of the boundaries of the U.S. All right. Beauties of technology, huh? All so right. we can do this now. All right. Real. <laughs> yes. Okay. I have oh. a special place in my heart for you guys. I think you all felt it. I just feel like even though you all came as a group only one year uh, and you, we we connected and there's something about you that's really special to not only me, but as Brandy was saying, there's there was a, a whole feeling of the entire audience um, having the same or similar emotions from watching your performances. So we're delighted that you are here. Sorry about the fire. Um, I want to let you know that I always start out the 
this podcast talking about why I call it respect. And we've been talking to different people in the United States about, you know, how they experience, how they encounter respect. But I want to know what it's like where you are in the dance community. How do you encounter either immense amount of respect or lack of it and how it's different from here? Yeah, well, um, with regards to how it's different from there, I, I, we can't really speak on that because, uh, I mean, having been there, you know, to perform once, I mean, we had an, such an amazing time in San Francisco, the whole festival, we had a great time. It's one of our, um, you know, one of our really memorable shows and, and the, the reception that Vice, that Vice got um, at that festival was, was incredible um, because you don't know, you know, playing to a European audience, it... You, you, we sort of know what to expect, but when you go out to a wider, you know, an American audience that maybe is not used to the, the how we do things or how we do it as Bird Gang or, you know, in London or whatever, then uh, you never know how it's going to be translated. But it seemed like everyone got it. Everyone was sort of in the, the same place. The feedback that we got, there's so much respect and warmth that we got in San Fran that it, it, it really made us feel at home coming from Europe, so. I think a big thing to say about respect is like the art form, you know, the art form being respected in many different ways that it comes in as well. You know, in, in London, it might come out differently to in America and there's lots of people's expression of individualism within it. So respecting that and understanding that it's not just one way of doing things is very much an expression of the individual artist. So I think respect is as much as it is an audience and a creative relationship, it's also very much creative on creative relationship. So, um, and I think within Bergang in general, respect is a massive word. You know, we are very different creatives within one family. So respect is sort of the thing that we're founded on. Um, each person coming with a different voice and um, knowing where does that fit in? Where, where am I pushing too far and things like that. So I think it's, Comes in so many, so it's a very suited word for these sort of conversations. So, yeah. And I think it's a really good point that Kendra just made about how different places, different cultures express respect um, and appreciation of anything. Uh, we found that, you know, Americans, you guys tend to be more outgoing. So you, you tend to like, you'd say exactly what seems to be on your mind and then boom, and it's out there. You want everyone to know that. And it's, you know, some people are, are like that, in, but there tends to be a more of a bit more um, withheld thing, you know, uh, certainly in London, the UK with regards to the art. So people you find still do really respect each other and, and each other's work, but maybe are not as vocal about it, mm -hmm. uh, apart from, you know, one-on-one -on -one or, you know, and that varies, of course that varies, um, but it's, it's, it's always nice to play to an American audience because you'll know exactly what they're thinking. <laughs> I, I love hearing about, um, you know, people who don't live here in America, just how we, we come off. Um, so it's just always interesting. And then it's also interesting just within, you know, maybe the country you live in different parts and, and just culture and communication and all of that. And it is very much tied to, to respect as well. Um, I want to ask, so I, I think here in America, um, dance companies struggle to like, you know, to full on like immerse in their art and pay the bills and pay the rent and eat and, you know, just like have a, a career. So I'm interested in um, learning about like, you know, sources of funding or just the dance community in general, the kind of support around that. Like what here, I know Makaya works very hard to get grants for the Dance Fest. Um, and when I was in uh, her dance company, Soul Force, we hustled to like, you know, get costumes and things like that. So tell me about how that is happening for um, dancers in the UK. So the hustle, that's part of the journey, right? Like, let's not, let's not talk it down. Let's not talk it up. It's really, it's part of the journey because we, all, we are all trying to make something out of nothing a lot of the time. But I think that's also what brings a lot of the beauty in what we create and what we have to say. Um, however, yes, it's a, it's a massive thing. It's um, A, I think it's got a lot to do with um, people also undervaluing themselves 
and the years of work that they've put in into into their into their art into their education of it into their training of it you know you don't become a strong dancer in one day you know it takes years of practice and same as any other business i think you need a you know but i think we don't we sometimes um have this thing of undervaluing what that is from a monetary perspective because we might not want to put a number on it on what it's worth do you know what i mean mm-hmm. um and then the other side is um, not really having the same sort of structural um, advice or upbringing in terms of invoicing, in terms of doing your taxes, in terms of all those financial management systems that as an artist, you don't, you don't get taught. No one tells you this. Um, if anything, they keep it from you so you don't give them an invoice uh, <laughs> and things like this. So it's, I think there's a massive thing of a undervaluing, um, and it's happening in the UK as well. You know, undervaluing yourself, but then also not really knowing how to value yourself and how to put that in the right words for someone who's paying for your services. Um, and then in terms of the funding, I would say that it took us a long time to understand the language that we need to use to get the funding. Because often when you're coming from the creative perspective, you have a different language, you have a different mindset, you have, um, uh, you're not using the words that people who are gonna fund it know, you know, sort of the business language, the business terms, you know, uh, ROI and all the all of these sort of terms that we're not taught to use. We use different, same goes down to, um, we don't call ourselves creative entrepreneurs. We call ourselves dancers and artists. Now, if you say just entrepreneur on the end of it, it already puts a whole sort of financial management, project management thing on top of that. Do you know what I mean? So it's a whole language. Um, I had to go away to business school um, Mm. to study to get myself up to scratch because I was tired of Bird Gang doing all of this incredible work Mm. and us just not making it as a company. We can't support anybody. We couldn't pay anybody to do projects for us. We were basically being part of the problem because we had to use people's skills without being able to pay them properly. Tired of that, absolutely tired of that. So we had to go away, learn the language, um, apply for some funding, get some backing into the company for stuff that we thought we're doing anyway every day. But actually, no, wait, this is a job. This is, I should be, we should be paid for this so I can do this all day and support others in doing what they're doing. So we're very big on um, also teaching people financial literacy and stuff as artists without taking away what it actually is to be an artist and the way that you need to think as an artist because it's you can quickly drown that out with too much of the language if, if that makes any sense so um so we're very sensitive on this subject but we are we we, we you know we have to do the whole applying for funding um the good thing is it also makes us really think about the projects that we're doing and how it's impacting the wider audience who are we helping? Who are we supporting? How are we doing that? You know, by writing these applications, it also makes us think that through a lot more. And I think that's also a nice benefit of it. Um, but we've seen a massive shift since we started in 2005, you know, sitting at home, sewing the costumes, uh, trying to sort of learn how to edit the music to get our first bird net show up, you know, please, can you do this show with us? You know, but then, also, people were really hungry and wanted to because of what the material is and what the company wanted to say. So I think there's a real sensitive point of not losing that hustle because that hustle mentality is the identity of what hip hop and hip hop theater is. I think it has a lot to do with it. So without losing that, you do have to be clever about getting the funding that can support people in doing that. Right. So what that makes me think of is code switching. So being black in America and having to, you know, be at work or out in public or wherever and know that language, right. And culturally what's going on and and how I need to tread or, and then in my own safe spaces, you know, keeping that rich culture of where I come from and how I communicate and interact culturally with that, you know, in that safe space. So that's, it reminds me of that, how you have to have this business sense, but you don't want that to, right, the the, the masks, the hats, you don't want to have to wear this hat so much that like this other one is just like getting, you know, dusty and then you put it on and it doesn't fit anymore, right? Yeah. 
I really appreciated your answer. Um, I feel like that was one of the best uh, answers and breakdown. And it was very similar to what we go through here. And, um, you know, for me, I have this like, I don't know, I have this idea that the dancers in London are just like, way up here like ser seriously and I've just always had it in my thought in my head well they must be getting more support they must be getting funded more you know I don't know what it is maybe it's the water maybe it's a mixture of everything but I love I really appreciate you breaking that down because it's it's all the stuff that we had had to learn um I've had to learn from square one in this stuff because I didn't come to any of this as a as a producer director or any of this I came learning just like you you guys did as a choreographer and dancer. I'm gonna make some uh, points now, just to add on a couple of things that um, I feel need to be said. Yes. Um, and hey, we'll say- Take it there, take oh. it there. <laughs> yeah. um, with regards to, uh, firstly, like um, what, what you said with regards to, to London, I, I think, Part of that is the same reason for Los Angeles in that there, there's a culture that um, there's a, an, a commercial industry that has to be supported mm. here. So uh, in Europe, really, London is the center of uh, the commercial dance industry. So in terms of work, the actual thing that all, like most dancers, when we start out, we're all trying to get work. We want to get paid to do what we love. Now, uh, we find out as we go further along in that journey, that the value that is put on dance from the outside is not as high as is put on other things like acting, like maybe a singer, like a whatever. So dancers, we tend to find ourselves at the bottom of the entertainment ladder. You get paid the worst, you get treated the worst, you get, you're always, it's you, having been an act, having like worked in the acting industry and in the dance industry, you see the vast difference in how you're treated. So you have to understand we're still thought of, especially in street dance and hip hop, you are still thought of as a children's family showcase material. That's what it is. So uh, if this was an opera or a, a ballet, uh, a contemporary show where they, they are esteemed more, therefore people will pay more because it's advertised differently. It's seen as different. This is seen as art. This is seen as, oh, this is something fun for the children and the battling and go, yeah, go over there. Cool, lovely, you're doing your little showcase, but you're not adult. You're not adult, you're not considered adult. Now that's what partly, partly with Bird Gang, why we do hip hop theater and why we like to tell stories, why we like to do slightly darker, more adult content is because we are trying to move out from it being just a family thing, which is great, by the way, it needs that as well. That's one of its strengths, it's showcase, it's battle ability. It's, that's what, because given hip hop is kind of effervescence and it's, it's life, but we need to be seen now in the, in the artistic realms, in the upper echelons of art. And that can't be what we have to push in all of those areas. So obviously funding wise, things are starting to get better. Certainly for Bird Gang, you know, things are starting to get slightly better in the UK. I don't know how it is in San Fran, but, or in LA to be honest. But I mean, I think that the perception of street dance and hip hop has to be elevated first. And then, uh, and that can only be elevated by us making work that's, that crashes down doorways and says, sorry, you can't ignore us now. We're here and you like our work too, so. You're gonna to have to take it. It's not just something for kids. We can like this is adult stuff as well. It, um, it, can I just add, can I just add to that that you know us calling like we we would think we we were taught this uh, told this and uh, like we got we realized this quite uh, just brief. Uh, wow, my words. Very recently, in, um, us talking about hip hop as well and art and styles in um as styles why are we saying styles why not art forms you know like why are we not saying locking is an art form popping is an art form uh, house is an art form we're saying styles we're already in the language that we use as well i think um i like to i like to when there's an issue i like to look at what can we do like, yes, we can point fingers and all that, but also what can we do to change that? And I think talking about our art forms more as higher echelon art forms and delivering that, and um, that's what I was saying about having the confidence and not undervaluing yourself. It's just so important and it starts, it starts with us. Yeah, and it, sorry, just you just lose by me, Kendra. See, this is how it works, but, but it's like for us, like by valuing yourself, 
there's certain times where we've had to miss out on opportunities. We've had to turn certain stuff down. And that's a very difficult thing for a lot of dancers to learn how to do. You say, look, I am, we are, I don't know what's a, a very valuable handbag make. I don't know, you might know one. Like whatever is the, like the best handbags, we have to value ourselves as that. Obviously we need to not be unrealistic, but we need to value ourselves as valuable rather than, oh yeah, please, I will do anything for you. Cause that's, that's, you know what I mean? That's JC Penney's, for example, is that as the store, like, you know what I mean? You might go there, that's fine for that sort of thing. You go there to get that, but we want to go to, I don't know what is a very fancy place, but we want to go to a fancy place. If we want to pay the big money for the fancy stuff, we go there, you know what I mean? We don't go there. And so we put ourselves in this store, not in that store. And you have to turn down some of that store's opportunities is the problem, you know? So it's, it is a struggle. It's, it's this struggle where you have to, sometimes you will lack, but the long-term benefit of that, if you're not just trying to get short-term quick money gain, it, it, the long-term benefit is that, oh, people start to put you in a different bracket now. You start to separate yourself from the crowd more and more. Um, so I'd say to all dancers, this is a thing, look, please value your product. Your product is valuable. Value your own product. Do not, because no one else is going to, if you don't, I promise you no one else will value it. Yes. Damn it. This, everything you have said is exactly what I've been wanting to hear I, out of other people's mouths, but my own. I'm dead right now. I want to just quit. <laughs> I'm done. I want to just go about my day. Wrap this yeah. up. I yeah. mean, <laughs> but you don't know how much I needed to hear, needed to have that said. What I've been working for for 22 years by changing little things like saying dance companies instead of dance teams and just little things like that make a big difference to try to say, oh no, this is art. This is just the same as this art and, it's, and it should be revered and honored and everything. So thank you so much. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I love it i want to ask you though tell us about bird gang who is bird gang when did it start what's it all about you talked a little bit about it but give us some origin stories well uh we started in 2005 um myself simeon saye simeon can't be with us here tonight um but essentially the management team are Myself, Simeon Saye, Kendra, Horsburg, we are now the management. It started in 2005 and there were uh, myself, Simeon Saye and Ivan Blackstock. Um, and Ivan Blackstock, we still kind of work freelance with him, but he has his own company now. So it's, you know, we're still kind of interfed. And um, we essentially, Ivan and Simeon were, we'd all danced in the same dance crew called Dance to Excess back in the day. And um, then we all sort of just had a similar vision, I think, and we all knew we wanted to venture out into choreographing ourselves and being creative ourselves. Simeon started a group that trained after uh, Erdang at their dance school. It, he, they trained on Friday nights and we started going. And Kendra went to Erdang as well. And that's how she kind of fell in with, with Sim and, and Ivan. And then, I, you know, over the years, our first show was 2006. Um, and we started training together in 2005. And then our first show was kind of a success. And then um, we oh. just went from there. Kendra, you fill in some bits. I know I'm seeing stuff. Our first show was a breaking convention, 2006. And the, I think this sort of says it. We, we titled it, Who is Bird Gang? That mm. was, uh, we were all covered. We were all, um, you didn't know the color of our skin. You didn't know our sex. You didn't know anything. All that was important was the movement and the art that we created. So that was our that was our mission is because we were tired of quick fame. We were tired of people shouting people's names before they've even moved when the person who isn't known is actually incredible. Uh, so we were tired of all that sort of hierarchy and fake fame stuff. We really just wanted Bird Gang and the language of Bird Gang to be known and to be uh, appreciated. And, and also we'd come from... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. So, uh, just in dance to excess, we'd all come from a commercial background. So, I like, although we were training in, in, in hip hop and various street styles and whatnot, I'd worked commercially. I've been dancing for Mariah Carey and, and Simeon, you know, we'd all, we'd all been working. So, we, we'd all experienced the commercial industry. And there was something that was not fulfilling. 
for any of us. And we still carried on to work commercially after that. Mm -hmm. And we still do certainly as choreographers, but there was something deeply unfulfilling for me as a dancer and a creative. I didn't even know I was really a creative at that point, but I, I, I just wonder, I do these jobs that should be, that other people wanted and that should be, you know, this is the jobs you want to get. And it was just awful. It was awful. After every job, I was like, why, why am I doing this? But I wouldn't feel the same when I'm doing a bird gang thing and I'm not getting paid nothing and we're broke and we're, you know? And so I'm like, this isn't the way it should be. Surely it's not. Like, I, I hate doing these jobs. It's, it's boring. Uh, but it's... So, uh, go on. so just to quote our other co-director, he said, when we were young, dumb and living with mum, uh, <laughs> we were we really enjoyed just sharing what we did and we were, we created every friday in the studio we messed around we it built our jokes into into these sets and pieces and this 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 thing called who is bird gang came out and we uh showed it a breaking convention and the crowd just went nuts and we were like whoa are we ready for this what is this so then we realized no wait a minute we have a lot to say and we've got a lot of work to do to keep that voice going and to keep continue growing now because we'd only just started and it was a massive responsibility so to speak um so that yeah, so there are many years of um, doing the same thing, creating, but what was beautiful about Bergang is that we work like a flock. So really our creatives and the people in the company, we really, they go off and do their thing, but when we come together, we flock together, just like a murmuration and we sort of move in different ways. Um, hence why we've all got our bird names and it really, we're really connected to that idea of go off and get as strong as you can and bring it home and then teach us, you know? So I think that's what kept us going over the years and just that word respect. Like we had so much respect for that little hub that kept us sane that we would like, we always wanted to put our best bits in the pot. And so we started creating in very different languages, but somehow it was always a bird, like you'd know when it was a bird gang thing. There was something. We couldn't put it into words for years, and that's probably why we haven't had a, a strong marketing strategy. And you know, we were only registered to the 2015 because we had to figure out what this was. What is this thing that's bird gang? But we're actually everybody's doing their own thing, but everybody knows it's bird gang. And then we work so well as a collective, but we also work really well independently. So that was sort of our struggle, but also our our strength. You know, we couldn't be put in a box, hence why we might not have got certain commissions or funding because no one really knew how to explain it. But we did continue and we, we're still here today, 15, 15 years later, um, because we were so different and we had so many different pots and hands that we could jump into. Um, so, yeah, just continue, continue. And there was something, I mean, I, I don't know about you, well, I do know about you, Quilly, and, and everybody was ripped in different directions, but we kept staying together. We had loads of times where we were like, okay, let's just let this go. We've got no funding. We, no one's turning up to rehearsals. This, this it takes the piss. Let's just go and do our thing. Nope. Month later, we're all doing something together again. So we were like, okay, no, come on. This is this, we've got to follow. Sort of like a marriage, <laughs> a little bit. It was sort of like, a, like, like, but we've worked at this, do you know what I mean? It's not like this has been plain sailing, because yeah. it has not, but it has been like warm, warm, warm. But you find in those valleys, in those dark, deep places where things were difficult, looking back, that's where we learned the most. That's where mm. we made the most progress was where we were going through them, them periods there where it's like, oh man, that's, this is hard. And I, and this, I, can't, I can't be bothered to do this anymore. I don't I want- I think to. some of our best work. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, from our darkest, our darkest uh, times, whether it's as a communally or, or individually, a lot of our best works have come from those struggle moments. And without, you know, pressure makes diamonds, you know, all those cliches and those sayings, but it's all, it's all true, man. Listen, without resistance, you don't build muscle. Oh, so, I'm telling you. And, <laughs> right? So, I mean, so you started going into, you know, what my next, you know, questions are about, you know, your inspiration for creativity. So I heard Kendra talk about the voices, you know, you mentioned like, you know, creating and, and what the voices are kind of telling you to do and then talking about these valleys. So go into that, just continue, go into that, 
you know, what does it look like when Bird Gang is in that valley? What does it look like when Bird Gang comes back together and starts, you know, putting the, the piece together or movement or? The, um, I think I can, I can mainly, again, as I said, we worked a lot independently, but I, I think the aviary that I performed at um, uh, San Fran um, at Hip Hop Fest um, is a good example of that because that was in a time where, you know, I was in, but we, we were creating, we had, I had my breasts tied down. I, you didn't know whether I was white, black or female or male or anything. You didn't know anything about me, but that also meant I had to know who I was inside stronger. And I was starting to think about, okay, so I can do all of this stuff, but who's, who am I? What bird am I? What do I have to say? Or what can I give to the company or to the language of bird gang? So I literally decided to put myself in a situation that is, I, I came out a bit of a dark place where I was personally, but also I put myself in the situation where I felt the most uncomfortable. All on my own on stage, in a cat suit, which is practically naked, uh, and just you know, just me, just my choreography, and out there for everybody to judge and everybody to see. That was the best challenge I ever put myself because I feel like that's when I realized this is the language that Kendra can give to Bird Gang. This is the language that has 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 grown up, and I made a conscious decision to choreograph it with all the tools that I had learned so far and that came to me naturally, not to try and stick anything on or be Quayley or be Simeon or be Kayla or be someone else in the company. I just wanted to be me. Um, so I think that's one beauty in Bergang is that we really want to nurture that individuality because it's the same when uh, Quayley's working on Bicycle. It's very much inspired from, I mean, I'll let him talk about it, but I guess the creativity comes from allowing yourself to be in a company, be in a group, be a team, but also very, very much try and find out who you are and how does that, how does that fit in with the company? So as much as, you know, there's a lot of companies out there where there's one leader, this is the language, we all going to do this thing. There's one person saying what direction goes in. That never worked for us. The beauty of us is that we all had to pull our socks up. We all had to be leaders uh, in our own weird ways, but we all had to be it in some shape or form. And that's what I think brings the creativity into the company, even now with our younger generation, like uh, our next tier, like Kayla and, you know, Simeon Campbell and, the, and Kenji, the, the, the youngers that are coming up now, we've really encouraged their own personalities in that as well. But you, you just find this Bergang string that goes through it, which we are still sort of trying to, explain in words absolutely and i also think that um, one important thing to note is how is that when to take the lead and when to submit mm -hmm. because this is especially with having three of us it, the, the good thing about the power of the, the number three is that whoever is leading on a project so kendra will obviously lead on her project but then she has the two others to sit under her who, to, who then are the, her support. So she sits on our shoulders. When I'm leading the project, if it's vice, I sit on their shoulders, if you know what I mean? So I always have that point. They know that I am leading this project. So there's a point, but it has the support necessary from behind it. You know what I mean? And so you drive as a wedge. Uh, it got to like football terminology, but you drive through as a penetrative wedge is always much more better. And so when one, one person leading, otherwise you're gonna get people pulling in different directions, it, power struggles, that gets awkward. So you have to learn both to take the lead and when to submit and say, okay, now I'm the second person. I, you know, I sit under you, you're the leader on this. Um, I think that's really important. Otherwise, again, like a relationship, you know. I'm telling you, this is like the manual on how you can successfully run a dance company full of like, very creative, strong people. I mean, really, this is like you, you're ready for your TED talk, Quayle. Randy, that was that's really true. Is he really I, for real? I am for so serious. So I serious. Now, when you think about the performances that you've seen Bird Gang do, and I've seen more because I've seen them apply for Dance Fest um, 
for years. And there's been times where I haven't been able to fit them in the program. And there's been times that have. Every time I see what they do, it's so intentional, Brandy. There is thought behind it. I see that wedge now. I mean, I, I can see all of this, you know, it's given me like my hairs are standing up on my body because I get it. Um, tell us about when you, because the two of you only came to Dance Fest that one year in 2014. Tell us what that was like for you. Well, I mean, it was amazing. It was, um, yeah, it was our first time. It was November 2014, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, it was it was amazing. It was my first time to San Francisco. Um, I actually have my sister now lives with her family in San Francisco, but at the time it wasn't. So we got to see, well, we just got to be in San Francisco and it's just how beautiful it is and walk around and, you know, just see everything and all of the benefits there. Um, the, the festival, obviously, this was the first time, this was in early in Vice's performance history. So Vice was still a, a, a bit of a baby to me. Um, it came from a very personal place, so it was... I still, I didn't, again, I did, I was terrified because I didn't know how it was going to be received by an audience over there, whether they would get it or not, or appreciate it or not. Um, but we found everything so smoothly run and everyone so easy and, and how open people were. I think we were used to, in certain like street, like street dance, hip hop battles, competitions, stuff like that, certainly in London when I was coming up, there was a bit of a, a standoffiness. You didn't, even if someone was incredible, you didn't let them know that they were incredible because, you know what I mean? This is still a, it's still, we're still here to, you know? But, <laughs> but as, but when we were there, people were just free with their compliments. People would be like, yo, you guys are amazing. I said, like, oh. Yeah, we do. Thank you. And we think you're great too. And they're like, thanks. And we're like, oh. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? <laughs> so nice. Everyone's so nice here. Um, and so yeah. that, that was that was lovely. And it was just like, every time we've gone away, we've been like, Vice has been all over the world now. But one of our, that we really remember uh, the San Francisco Hip Hop Fest. It was one of our early Vice, you know, performances where it, it was just, it's such a warm memory. What's Vice? Tell us about Vice. Well, Vice is the uh, 12 minute piece that I performed at um, the San Francisco Hip International Hip Hop Dance Fest. <laughs> so I have to get that right. Um, <laughs> And it's a piece essentially about addiction, um, but uh, uh, we're now turning it into an hour and a half full length show. And that's been kind of in the works for the last four years. So we've done two R and D's of that research and development uh, processes for that. And uh, hopefully it was supposed to be scheduled to be the third and final one this year. Obviously that went out the window. So um, 2021 is, is looking like, but um, Vice is, yeah, it's a show about addiction um, obviously, in the show, it's using the, the physical things of alcohol and cigarettes or tobacco, um, which are kind of obvious. Everyone understands those. Everyone gets those, even if they haven't been through that themselves. Um, but I think it resonates so well with people because even if they haven't, they have no personal experience of a substance addiction or like, like alcohol or, or cigarettes or whatever, everyone understands that feeling of isolation, of, of, of being in a place that makes them deeply unhappy and that they want to escape from but can't because something in their life, some pathology, some whatever is holding them back. Even if it's things that you were taught that were wrong or as a false self-image that you've been taught about yourself that's holding you back. All of these things that we gather through life that are kind of vices, they're traps, they hold us, they stop us from getting to where we need to get to. Now for me, it, it happened to be cigarettes and occasionally alcohol but you know for other people it's different things so so that the message itself is quite simple in the piece of there is a current situation you're not happy with there's a situation you want to get to and there are obstacles to you getting to that place so it's a really simple storyline but it's one that i think it, it's a classic story right? it's one that everyone can relate to in some sense so very true it really is. Um, I've seen it a lot of times. I saw it at Breaking Convention. I've seen it on video. Of course, I saw it when you performed it at Dance Fest. And I could watch it a thousand more times. Uh, every time I see it, I, I get those same feelings. And um, it is something that everyone can relate to in one way or another. Uh, today has been like church, school. <laughs> 
everything, Brandy. <laughs> We're in business class. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yes. Okay. Um, these shirts are going to be available on Dance Fest uh, website, sfhiphopdancefest.com, which is where you can get tickets for the show. Remember that the tickets can be as low as a dollar, okay? I understand. We know. It's 2020. You don't have it. It's okay. We want you to just join us and enjoy some of the past performances that we've been honored to uh, present, to see some new pieces to watch some live performers there's going to be vips that pop in and say hello to us brandy's going to be there gypsy and i and it's on november 21st my uh, birthday really oh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to give you a shout out we are <laughs> we're gonna have to mm -hmm. put the Oh, that's beautiful. That is awesome. Um, all right. Well, it has been an inc like one of my favorite episodes of all times. Um, I can't thank you enough. There's mm -hmm. something that I feel very connected to the two of you, even though I know I've only met you once. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you all were here, I felt very connected to you. And when you left, I almost cried. I don't know if you remember oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I adore you. And um, thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'm not sure who our guest is next week, Brandy, but I'm sure it's going to be somebody phenomenal. If that's what it's been, that's the trend. Phenomenal learning, like yeah. getting goosebumps about the power of dance and dance fest too. I mean, I'm a, you know, just when people come to dance fest, the people who are there already helping to make this thing happen are ready to welcome you in and just be like, oh, you want to drive around the city? Oh, you want to, you know, I'll pick you up from the airport. It's not like, you know, this person who is just like, yeah, I'm taking you from here to there, but it's like, oh, it's Dance Fest weekend. Welcome. Yeah. We hug you up. We gotta hug you up and love you up. That's right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap this up today. Thanks again to our gang. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, guys. Ooh, I like that. We're gonna throw out the sign. Okay, there we go. go. There we go. Yeah. Right on. Woo! Thanks Thank for you so much. Us. Really appreciate it, and it's so nice to see you again and to meet you, Brandy. Nice um, to meet you and too. have an amazing time, and let's stay in touch. We're only uh, across the water. Yeah. Which is not that far anymore, right? Because Zoom making all this money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, until next time, thanks again. Bye-bye. Right, nice. Love and respect. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.